Good evening and welcome to the February 7th, 2024 Penfield Town Board Legislative Meeting. Deputy Supervisor Akinen, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you, Bob. I'd like to call this meeting to order. <laughs> Will the deputy clerk please uh, do the roll call? Barry? Here. Lee? Here. Leanhouse? Here. Ockenden? Here. Teglish? Here. We have a couple announcements. Uh, Councilman Ockenden? Uh, I have no announcements this evening. Okay, Councilman Barry? Okay, gather your friends and family for a night of winter fun. The town of Penfield is proud to present the third annual Family Winter Night Out event on Friday, February 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. at Harris Whalen Park Sledding Hill. Enjoy an evening of sledding, a moonlit hike with the Penfield Trails Committee, tasty treats from local food trucks, music, and games. This is a perfect chance to embrace the winter weather and create unforgettable memories with your loved ones. Don't forget to dress warmly and bring your sleds. We can't wait to see you there for a night of adventure and enjoyment. For more information, please contact Penfield Recreation at 585-340-8655. Don't miss out on this exciting winter event. And bring snow with you. I was going to say, bring the snow. <laughs> Councilwoman Lee. Thank you. Uh, town offices will be closed in observance of President's Day on February 19th, but the public library will be maintaining its normal business hours. Thank you. Councilwoman Teglish. I have two. February is going to be a fun month, y'all. Um, on February 23rd, join the Penfield Trails Committee for this full moon hike as part of the Rec Department's Winter Snow Night on Friday, February 23rd from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30. Listen for screech owls as we hike through the Harris Whalen Park trails. Bring your snowshoes if you have them and headlamps or flashlights. Meet at the Upper Pavilion parking lot at Harris Whalen Park and look for the hike signs. The hike is open to all ages with the re recommendation that children under 16 be accompanied by an adult. It's important to come prepared with appropriate footwear such as hiking boots or shoes as the terrain can occasionally be steep and slippery. Pre-registration is encouraged on the Penfield Rec website at penfield.org forward slash hike. Lastly, if you're interested in getting involved in supporting the Penfield Trails Committee, they're always looking for volunteers to help them with planning and trail maintenance. For more details, you can contact Penrec at 340-8655, extension zero. And the very next day is the Town of Penfield Mark Parks and Recreation Master Plan Update. Recently, a community input session for the 2024 Parks and Rec Master Plan Update was held at the Community Center. Presentations were made by the Rec Department regarding the update process and breakout sessions were held to gather feedback. You can view the presentation at penfield.org forward slash rec master plan, all one word. A second session is scheduled for Saturday, February 24th from noon to two, again at the Community Center. This session will offer an update from the Parks and Rec Master Plan Committee and present additional projects for consideration in the plan. Later this month, an online survey regarding parks and recreation in Penfield will be provided as another means of community feedback. It will be made available on the town's website and through Penfield Recreation. The town board anticipates receiving the committee's report on the master plan later this year. I was at that presentation and it was fantastic. I really encourage everyone to attend that. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I have a, a quick announcement too. It's been, uh, it's been a great first month as town supervisor and uh, amazingly, it went by really quick January. <laughs> and it's been great meeting all the town staff and I've been out in the community a little bit, which has been a lot of fun. And I wanna to touch on a few things. I attended the Scout Troop 312 or Eagle Scout ceremony on Saturday, which was really cool at the firehouse, Bob's, Bob's place. And uh, there was four eagles that were, we presented with a proclamation. And they all did uh, some work in the town of Penfield, which is really cool. Paul Brooker is one of them. He renovated a classroom at St. Joe's. And Joe Collusion created, not in Penfield, he created, uh, built a, a feeding box for the sea lions at the Seneca Park Zoo, which That's is really cool. cool. 
And then the McCusker brothers, twin brothers, Chris and Matt, Chris built a pedestrian bit, uh, bridge at the Four Mile Creek Park. And then Matt, the avid skier that he is, created a Nordic ski bench uh, at Shadow Pines. The town is grateful for their service and uh, just terrific. I also want to honor Pete, Pete Heinsberger, who has uh, been with the town for 35 years, just retired. And I had a lot of fun meeting Pete. We had a great celebration for him, which was really cool. He's had various roles with the DPW and the sewer department. And we just want to acknowledge Pete's service and wish him well. And he promised he's not going to go too far. So thank you to Pete. And then I just want to touch on the eclipse, which is kind of cool. Uh, the one guy, uh, there's a few people that are really excited about it. Um, but I just want to say in a, in a bunch of meetings that we should be excited about it. It's April 5th, Monday, April 5th. April 8th. April 8th, sorry. Thank you. Right after Easter break. And it should be really exciting. Uh, but on the other end of that, it, it's a concern. It, we talk to the sheriff's department and meetings. Traffic could be an issue. And we're, we're going based on eclipse in other parts of the country and what it could mean. So <coughs> I want to talk, just acknowledge traffic could be an issue. I know the schools are cl closed, which are great, uh, I believe. And for the elderly community, it's a concern. You probably want to delay a doctor's appointment, not that day. I believe the hospitals are going to delay any elective surgeries. And so I'm very anxious about this, although this could be a lot of fun. Uh, it could be uh, a concern in terms of traffic. So I just want to, everyone to be aware of that and more to come. You'll hear a lot in the news. The county's kind of running the show on this, which is great. So more to come on that. And then next order of business is public hearing. I believe we have one scheduled hearing tonight for a condi conditional use permit in the Four Corners District at 1790 <coughs> Penfield Road. And I'll now turn this over to our deputy clerk. Yes, public hearing to consider a conditional use permit for a tattoo studio in a vacant ten tenant space located at 1790 Penfield Road in the Four Corners District. And I believe Director Ivers can yeah. shed some light on that, is that right? Uh, uh, before we, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to shed light, but I think yeah. um, the deputy clerk's gonna provide some information about how it was uh, noticed and that it met all the legal requirements. Yes, the legal notice was published in the Webster Herald on January 23rd on the town website and on the town clerk's bulletin board, 22 postcards were mailed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carrie? Yes, so this was an application that was initially reviewed at the last work session with the town board. Um, it's a, a tattoo studio locating in a space that was formerly occupied by a barber shop um, at 1790. Mm -hmm. That's a multi-tenanted building. Um, and so the town board uh, moved ahead with setting a public hearing to consider the application. The, um, the applicant is here and is happy to come up and provide some additional information about hours of operation and just the operation itself. So Jacob, this is your cue to come on up and uh, share additional information about the application. Thanks for coming back, Jacob. Yeah, perfect, anywhere with a microphone, except like <laughs> one of our seats. Well, thank you. Yeah, of course. And so Go ahead. So uh, the tattoo shop would be, like Carrie said, um, it would be occupying a previous, uh, a previous barber shop. Um, I know that the last, the last he hearing that we had, or the town board meeting that we had, there were just a few concerns just about the art gallery aspect of it. And I think parking as well may have been brought up. I can't remember. I think that may have just been a concern of maybe a few other tenants and things. Um, so the shop would be operating from 11 to 8, Tuesday through Saturday. It would be called Campfire Tattoo. There's the, the signs right there. Um, it would be, in, in my opinion, less of a parking obligation than the previous tenant, just because we would probably only have one to three appointments per day, just because it is a private studio. It wouldn't be really um, necessarily a traditional walk-in shop or anything like that. Um, the art gallery, <coughs> excuse me, the art gallery, uh, like we said last time, it just would be similar to um, like you guys have here in town hall or like in a coffee shop or something where we'd be sourcing um, you know, local artwork just to kind of show it off for the community, just to get 
some, you know, bit of Penfield in there as well. So, and I'm here to answer any questions that you guys have or any concerns or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Supervisor, yeah. I'm going to ask that you uh, stop the meeting for one second. Our camera system has suddenly gone black and we're having some issues and we need to do a reboot. Okay. I apologize for the interruption, but give us one second. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll open up the public hearing, and it sounds like we don't have anybody. Anyone for the Any, public hearing? Anybody in the audience would like to talk on this topic? No? Okay. Calls. Then I would like to, do I have to make a motion to close the public hearing? Well, so I'll make a motion. Just make yeah. sure that, just check again maybe with Brian to make sure there isn't anybody calling in. And yeah, Brian, you, you probably didn't hear me. Anybody call in? No one has not. Okay. All right. And then you can just close it. You don't have to, it doesn't have to. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. And next to agenda item is the public participation. Deputy Clerk, do we have anyone that has signed up so to speak? Right. So you're to yeah, go. you're all set. Yep, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and the CUP is then granted, right? Thank you. Well, we're going to, we can, um, we were going to talk about that at the work session um, next, uh, in, in a couple weeks. We would follow up. Unless you wanted to proceed administratively. I'm okay. I'm sorry, Supervisor. Do oh. you mind if we um, go back to the um, consideration of the conditional use permit? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank so you. So I, I know one of your, your missions is really to expedite uh, customer service as well as Thank business you. within the town. If the board recalls, we had asked for a hearing to be scheduled that was posed to us at the work session of whether or not allowing the director of developmental services to proceed administratively on this issue. And like the questions that you um, uh, recall, some of the just routine administrative questions was what's the impact to parking, traffic? Uh, signage, which I think met all the criteria of the application. So there were no objections in that sense. But the question of whether or not the town can ad proceed administratively on this, that was just some pause for us because we felt that the barber shop was at least slightly different than the operation of a tattoo parlor and, and the um, concept of the art studio. So we just wanted to put it out for a hearing to allow the public an opportunity to raise concerns, objections, or any feedback. Hearing that there are none, then I would make a motion that the board um, authorize the director to administratively issue the CUP at this time. I would second that. All in favor? Okay. Roll call. Roll call. call vote. Yep. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Barry? Aye. Uh, Lee? Aye. Leanhouse? Aye. Akenden? Aye. Teklish? Aye. All aye. Thank you. So then this thank allows you, you yep. to move then forward as well. Wish you the best with your business. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Candace. Appreciate that. Well, thank you, Supervisor. Thank you, Deputy Clerk. Yes, we do have some um, participation. Um, first is Anna, Anna Rose Eberhardt of Snowberry Circle. And maybe her, her husband may be speaking. Would you like to come up? Sure. Yep. It's perfect. Just speak into the microphone. Okay. And if you could say your name and your address, that would be great. Anna Rose Eberhardt, 5 Snowberry Circle. Can you pull it a little closer? I think you can move the whole mic. That's helpful. Yeah. There's only one reason that we are here, and that is our concern about the deer population. I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up or not. but Sure. Um, and and the, the reason for the concern is that the deer carry the Lyme disease, which is a debilitating disease, which is incurable. And unfortunately, my husband has been um, infected with this a number of years ago, and it raises havoc. And I just wondered if there is some way that we can um, at least cut down on the number of deer. Uh, we, we just have them by the dozens. They're just in the neighborhood. We have had a fence in our yard because there's no vegetation that survives. And uh, I don't know what can be done about it, but it's my, our main concern is that they carry the Lyme disease. It's just really bad. 
in a populated area like we have. I wondered if, if there would be a, a, a something like uh, they had in uh, Irondequoit uh, for a certain uh, yeah. season where they can call it and uh, bring down the, the population. Because, uh, like uh, my wife said, it's a uh, pretty de debilitating disease. And uh, in the last few years, they have been increasing pretty rapidly, even with in our area, in, uh, in uh, Village Green, a half dozen to dozen coming through uh, quite steadily. It's uh, something that uh, should be looked into from my point, opinion. And like she, my wife mentioned, I've been diagnosed with uh, uh, Lyme disease, and it's they, they can't really pinpoint it or, or treat it, but it's a, a neurological problem, and and also a, a joint arthritis is affected mm -hmm. by that. And I don't think we should wait until some other problems come up. And it, it's, a, it's also a, a danger a in, in tra with traffic. I, I have an idea that a lot of people have been seeing the deer laying, dead deer laying on the, on the side of the road. So it, it's dangerous and traffic, in traffic too. And I, uh, I've been... Uh, complaining last fall already, trying to see if we can get something done. And uh, when I stopped in a couple of weeks ago, the secretary mentioned there was a meeting and we should voice our opinion uh, here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Anything else you want to add? Mm. No, I think that's, that's about it. I wish, I hope something can be done because uh, I'm, I'm not so sure that I'm the only one in Penfield that right. is, is afflicted with that. I'm sure you're not. And we, and we uh, wouldn't want to have an epi epidemic going around, this, especially since there is no, no cure for it. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the comments. <clears throat> and we'll follow up with you one way or another. Absolutely. No, I, uh, I was told that uh, some, something uh, is in the works to, uh, to change the districts and uh, where, they can, where they can shoot deer outside of uh, the town itself. So, but I don't know, I'm not so sure if that is gonna help or not for the population inside town. Because if you chase them out of, out, out of there, they're gonna find their st safe spot and uh, probably congregate even more in, the, in town. But there shouldn't be a big, big of a problem. Uh, we've got <coughs> uh, parks and the old golf courses big enough areas where uh, uh, a shooting or a eliminating event could be staged. Well, thank you for those comments. I, I deer don't need a, a large area to live, I know that, and I see them all over the place, so I really appreciate the comments. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And reach out to the supervisor's office anytime, and we could talk it, talk about it more if you'd like. Anybody else would like to participate? Pa yes. Yes. Go ahead. Have, Sorry. Um, Neil Gannon. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Good. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Um, can you Neil can you mention your name? I'm, maybe you're going to do it. Neil address Gannon. Here. I live at 1133 Whalen Road. And I'm here regarding the gas line project that their rg &E was doing on Whalen Road in Saybrook. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen it or anybody familiar with it. 
but it's kind of right across the street from us, and we got the perfect side view of this ugly building with these bright green doors. It doesn't match anything in the place. We've got the uh, pan. I know they're not done with the project yet. Uh, we were never notified, never got a letter of notification about the project where maybe we could have suggested or talked about it, but there used to be a little green space over there, and I know it's too late now to change what they did. They did a lot of work. My concern is the, the way the building looks. It is just hideous looking building. We open our drapes in the morning from the living room, and there it is. It's, it's just right across the street. They got the house. They got the box behind the house. They got a panel wall behind that with stainless steel panels. Uh, at night, the light, that the street lights on Saybrook on the corner are so bright, we had to buy uh, room darkening drapes for the bedroom, because our bedroom faces that. Uh, I called uh, a while ago about it to talk to somebody if they knew anything about it, what we could, could be done. And they said, well, they're going to tip the light down a little bit. I said, you can't, it's a fixture. You're not, it's not a spotlight to tip it down. So I don't know if they could block one side of that light. My neighbor also, his bedroom is on that corner, and he says they had to do the same thing. The, the light is so bright on those corners. Uh, but my concern is the finished product. If, are they going to have fences put up around it so I don't have to look at this thing? I mean, I just want somebody to take a picture. If nobody's seen it, I, I wish you could just look at a picture right here and just see what this, this is what we look at. Can I show, just show you this? Is it sure, possible? sure. Just to take a look. Yeah. My bedroom faces the front. That's, that's yeah. just what you see. So and nobody's been around to look. It's just hideous. It's just a hideous building. It's too been there. It'll be 40 yeah, years. We built the house 40 years ago. And now this is what we're looking at. So I didn't know if they could put a couple of fences on the corner just to block the doors and that whole panel section, or if they're going to do Harvard Whitey just to block something. It's, it's 150, <coughs> feet, 150 feet from the front door. So, and, and again, that's what we're looking at. Yeah, I've so, seen yeah. yeah, I've seen the building. <laughs> no, is, is it Nick? I'm sorry. It's Nick, right? Neil. Neil, Neil sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's yeah, send me a picture, supervisor at penfield.org would be helpful to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could send me two. Okay. <laughs> I came in just before you know you, you were appointed, and I figured I'd give you time to wait and all that. But Amy, I talked to Amy, and, yeah. and she just told me that uh, she's, I think, the one that told me they're going to try to bend the light down so it doesn't shine in our bedroom, which you can't do. Uh, again, I don't know if they could put a, a deflector on my side of the street light so it's not our way. It's bright. You got one in each corner on Saybrook there. And again, we have the, the luck to be looking at the whole building you know the neighbor at, at the timber glen right on the corner they see the front of the building and from the west side on saybrook you got a berm and you got some trees there which kind of blocks off the whole thing we get to see i mean every morning you open up the drapes and there it is you sit outside and, and it just i just want to know if they could do arborvitaes or a couple section fence in the corner it doesn't have to be all the way around i know they have to get in there to work on it of course but uh they said they're going to wait till the springtime and they're going to talk about plantings and everything. So I just want to put it on record that uh, we'll be back. Got it, Neil. <laughs> I appreciate Send it. Send me a picture, please. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, yes, Sign? we also have Daniel Moore. Yeah. How are you doing, Daniel? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Daniel Moore and I reside at 75 Cobbles Drive. Uh, as many of you know that I'm a member of the Energy and Environmental Conservation Committee and I'm actually glad that deer population was brought up because uh, last year I was the Penfield representative to the Monroe County uh, Environmental Management Council where several of the other municipalities were talking about their deer program and how they have authorized bow hunting, for example, on property, like specific different types, but I'm more than willing to uh, talk to my colleagues from that uh, to see if something similar could be implemented here in Benfield. Um, so I'm actually kind of glad, but the second thing that I was uh, here to talk about, um, I'm looking at the agenda under the public works section and I see there's a lot of purchasing for vehicles 
Um, I'm not sure how many there are of that are electric or hybrid um, based, but however, uh, New York state law requires that 35% of new vehicles purchased in this state have to be either hybrid or electric. And that's only two years away from 2026. And 68% of new vehicles purchased in the state have to be, um, by 2030, they have to be uh, fully electric or hybrid. So I'm very concerned that um, we will be spending unnecessary money on our new fleet. Like, obviously we do need more vehicles, but is it possible for the town to, con to consider purchasing more hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles so we're compliant uh, with state code? <laughs> and that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I'll just throw out there that I, I went to an interesting I think it was a great Aracha Clean Cities luncheon. Very interesting. And that was part of the topic. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else, Deputy Clerk? Anyone else? I have no more. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> so <laughs> next, Mr. yeah. Supervisor, I do have a gentleman on the phone, Mr. Lockhart. Okay. So how do we get him on the speaker, Brian? Something I have to do? Uh, just say you can go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Lockhart. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, no. Brian, I can only hear you very, in a very low level here. Hello, hello, hello. I, I can only hear out of one speaker, Brian, closest to my, the desk or unit that I'm sitting at. Hold on for one second. Uh, caller, caller, I sound like. Uh, Mr. Lockhart. Hang in there, Kevin. Thank you. Brian, is there anything we can do? into a right panel. Hold on one second. Mr. Lockhart, if you can hear me, try again, please. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. Apologies. Um, can you can you hear on that end? Because the speaker is coming from over here. I, I might be able to hear him. Kevin, if you we can, can speak up, we'll, we'll give it a try. Yeah. yeah. Can anybody hear me? Oh, yes. yes. That's yeah. better. All right. Um, so I just want to call in because from time to time I um, interact with Penfield because Penfield has a lot of really good cycling lanes for bicyclists. And uh, the bicyclists are often at risk um, all across the county. And it stems from uh, a lack of clear division lines between the cycling lanes and the road and the sidewalk oftentimes, or there's many potholes, or maybe the cycling lane has not been established. But in Penfield, if there were some way to improve the bike lanes in Penfield, um, people, there's a big cycling community that cycles through there, and I think a lot of people agree that the cycling lanes are an area that could vastly be improved, and it would also produce um, a much safer environment, especially, let's say, like in front of, uh, on five mile, in front of the school, like you, you might notice that cyclists have to uh, ride in the road heading up to 441 or over on, um, uh, what's what the road, uh, I can't think, Blossom maybe, and that's very unsafe because um, there's a lot of potholes and stuff. So I think that might be a that might be the Mark for over at New York State GOT, Mark Cohen. I'm, I'm sure that you're familiar with, but maybe we could interact in some way to improve the the roads. Maybe who knows? Maybe somebody would be excited about that. But thanks for your time. I appreciate that, and I'm very glad that you have a call in. Uh, you have a phone number that I can call for public feedback. I appreciate that. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Am I still on? I guess I am. Okay. Deputy Clerk, anybody else? No. Okay. Brian, we're good? Yes. Okay. So next item on the agenda is additions or deletions to the agenda. I have an addition and a deletion. I'd, uh, I'd like to add resolution 24T-067 as new business, please. And it's my understanding that uh, the supervisor, you're asking for 
under old business resolution 24T-032 to be deleted from tonight's agenda. So I would support that as well. Okay. Thank you. So we make a motion to do that or, sorry. Motion. I'll second it. Deputy Clerk, can I have a? Is that for mm -hmm. both 67 and 23? So. The addition mm -hmm. and the deletion. It's an addition. By Lee, second by Tuglish, okay. Yep. Resolution 32 is being deleted. Right. And then resolution 67, 67 is being added as yeah. new business. I think Council Person Ogenden also has an addition to the agenda. Yes, if we're ready for that. Um, Mr. Supervisor, I have resolution 24T-066 that I would like to add under uh, new business, declaring the town's intent to serve as lead agency uh, under a secret review. And I would second that. Deputy Clerk, a roll call vote okay. for that. Uh, Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lean Houts. Aye. Hockenden. Aye. Teglish. Aye. All aye. Um, should we vote on the other, the deletion and the addition, 67 and 23? So we, we're going to stick the agenda, and I think the next agenda item is approval of the minutes. Should we go through that yeah, first? That, was the, I'm that sorry. was the one that um, Candace added 67 and deleted 23. Correct. And then, we, and then we added the 66, and so all right. three were taken care so, of. So, okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's good. Got it. Okay. All right. Move on to the minutes from the last meeting. Any changes or any? No? Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Deputy Clerk, roll call, call vote on the agenda or the minutes. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Okay, next item is, uh, oh, well, actually first, do we have any petitions that have come in? No. Okay. Um, I would like to say though, uh, the town clerk's office did um, receive in the, uh, letters that went out to the town board um, in support of the uh, real property tax for the volunteer firemen and ambulance workers from West Webster Fire District and Penfield Fire Company, and they'll be made part of the file. Okay. So we'll go with, uh, we'll begin with resolutions with law and finance. Deputy uh, Clerk. Yep. Reappoint Richard Lumbo to the Board of Assessment Review. I would move this as written. Second. Deputy Clerk, roll call vote, please. Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ak I'm sorry, Lean Houts. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Teglish. Aye. Aye. All right, we appreciate Mr. Lambo's service and continued service. Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a generator within a storm sewer easement at 19 Bainbridge Lane. So moved as written. Second. Second. Sorry. Roll call vote, please. Sue? Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a fence within a storm sewer easement at 38 Ramden Knowles Drive. So moved as written. Second. All in favor, Deputy Clerk, roll call Barry, vote. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Hecklish? Aye. Aye. Adopt a local law to amend Town Code Chapter 207, Taxation and Assessment, to modify real property tax exemption for volunteer fire and ambulance workers. So moved. Oh, Whereas the Town, I'm sorry. Uh, before we second this one, I did want to just give at least uh, a little bit of a primer. So the town has determined that tax exemptions for seniors provided in Chapter 207 of Penfield Town Code should be updated to conform with recent changes in New York State law. The town has determined this to be a Type 2 action under State Quality Environmental Review Act and has conducted a public hearing on the matter on December 6th in conformance with New York State Municipal Law. And this resolution would be uh, to allow the town to adopt uh, local law number one of uh, the new year 
a copy of which is attached as Schedule A, and the board has reviewed and also taken into consideration the uh, needs for the town for uh, having a full or as full as possible volunteer fire and ambulance contingency. We've also reviewed, received, and those are the letters that uh, Deputy Clerk has referenced, letters in support by Penfield Fire Company and West Webster that services portions of the town. And I'd like to at least note for the record, again, this is a volunteer, uh, volunteer fire and ambulance. The, the, the company did uh, see a dip in their volunteer force uh, due to a number of reasons at the beginning of 2020. And the, this goes, the tax incentive would allow, um, or tax exemption, excuse me, allows for retention efforts and um, recruitment. As one example, the Penfield Fire Company did respond to over 960 calls for service in the town. So again, we, we felt that it would be um, in our best interest to retain and again attract uh, because it is such a critical life service. Absolutely, and I know Chris is here. If anybody has any questions, Chris Lyon. No? no. Okay. Do Make a motion. A second yeah. on that. I will second that. Roll call vote, please. Barry. Sue. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lean House. Aye. Ackenden. I'll be abstaining from this resolution due to my involvement as a volunteer first responder. Okay. Teglish. Aye. All right. Okay. Adopt, adopt a local law to amend Town Code Chapter 207, Taxation and Assessment to modify real property tax exemption for persons with disabilities and limited income. So moved. Second. Whereas the town determined that the exemptions for seniors provided in Chapter 207 of the Penfield Town Code similarly needs to be updated to conform with recent changes in New York State law, <coughs> this resolution also is to bring us into compliance for certain exemptions for persons in this class. And I think I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Vote. <coughs> Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouts. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Hecklish. Aye. Aye. Adopt a local law to amend Town Code Chapter 207, Taxation and Assessment, to modify real property tax exemption for senior citizens. So moved. Second. Whereas the town determined again that tax exemptions for seniors uh, provided in Chapter 207 of the Penfield Town Code needs to, again, be updated to conform with recent regulatory changes. We held a public hearing on this matter on January 3rd as well. And this resolution would be to adopt those changes for state compliance. Barry. <coughs> Aye. Lee. Aye. Lean House. Aye. Akendit. Aye. Teglish. Aye. All aye. <coughs> Awarding professional consulting services contract for Clark Road Barn Conditions Assessment. So moved. Second. Whereas the town has issued a request for proposal requesting proposals from qualified design professionals to assess the existing conditions <coughs> of the Clark Road Barn. Town circulated an RFP <coughs> to known professionals, several of them, professional firms and individuals with the subject matter expertise. We also published the RFP on the town's website and made it public. In response to that bid, the town received one proposal <clears throat> by Torchia Structural Engineering and Design. The town has reviewed the qualifications in that proposed scope of work and found them to be a response, uh, well, the only responsive bidder <clears throat> to the outlined requirements of the RFP. The town also circulated a copy um, to the advisory council, advisory committee, excuse me, on the Clark Road barn. I, again, did just want to make sure, checking emails to see if there are any additional feedback from that committee, that advisory committee, but seeing none. <clears throat> there were some additional questions coming from that committee and reviewing uh, or understanding that there was the one bid and then just questions further on the qualifications and experience. <clears throat> I really appreciate Carrie and, and the work of her <coughs> others in following up to those questions. <clears throat> and as the board knows, just some concerns generally were, <clears throat> do we move forward with the bid to award 
when there's only one um, <laughs> response to the proposal and um, seeing that they had some um, prior opinion as to the condition of the barn, whether or not <clears throat> that would impact their assessment here. But I think uh, upon review of their further ex expertise and the projects that they've been involved in, at least for this juncture of the project where it's really just to give an assessment on the conditions, not necessarily a recommendation to the board uh, with next steps. And certainly the board would not be <clears throat> bound by any recommendations, should they make any, the board, I, I think uh, others can chime in, but we are committed <clears throat> to still making that a very transparent process of what happens with the barn next. I think the supervisor would also be open to any public feedback uh, between now and, and then <clears throat> and any next steps. And of course, if the advisory committee members had any other feedback, we certainly be open to hear it. And it's still going to be a very collaborative process uh, with that committee as well, because we appreciate their input. <clears throat> this resolution then would approve and award uh, that bid for an amount not to exceed 24500 And the contract for the services would still be reviewed by the town attorney prior to that um, execution from the supervisor. Barry? Aye. Any Lee? Wait. I think I seconded, so. But is there any yeah. other discussion or no, comments I, from? I, I did want to speak yeah. up and, and share my appreciation for what this advisory committee has done. Um, and we have been monitoring the emails to see if they had any additional feedback. And I do feel that with continued public <coughs> input and the advisory committee, um, I do feel that this is a good way to go to move forward with this to ensure that we are continuing to do things for this Clark Barn. Any other comments? Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lane Aye. Akenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All right. Authorizing the town supervisor to enter into a contract with New York State Department of State regarding the acceptance of grant funds for the Sales Landing Park Comfort Station. <clears throat> so moved. Second. As the town of Penfield has applied for a local waterfront revitalization program implementation grant through New York State, and we're happy to report that it was successful and we've been awarded, the town has been awarded $624,000 under the Environmental Protection Fund. Thank you. Barry? Is it Barry? open for discussion at all? Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. come on. Ahead. So I, Sorry, I just sir. had a question. Um, sure. Is this specific to, so was it written specifically for the restrooms? It was. Um, the comfort station um, facility, which includes restrooms with an attached overhang pavilion, um, was de described in detail as part of the grant, and that's the basis on which the monies were awarded. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Let's go. All set. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Acceptance of a donation of pre-owned office furniture. So moved. Second. Whereas the town supervisor donated office furniture to the town of Penfield, valued approximately at $3,800. By this resolution, the town board acknowledges this generous gift and recognizes the addition of those assets <coughs> uh, to the town's roster. Thank you for that. <coughs> well, sure. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean House? Aye. Hackenden? Aye. Hecklish? Aye. All aye. <laughs> Budget amendment to 2023 in the library fund for gift and memorial activity. So moved as written. Second. Roll call vote, please, Sue. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ockenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Budget transfers for the general highway and intensified lighting funds for 2023. So moved as written. Second. Roll call vote, please, Sue. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean Houts? Aye. Ockenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Adoption of town board rules of procedures for 2024. So moved as written. Second. 
Any, any, do you want to add anything, Pete? Um, sorry. Um, <clears throat> you had talked about maybe changing the order of the agenda. That is actually set forth in the rules. You can either do it by an amendment later, if you wanted okay. to do that, or you can move, I think you wanted to move um, approval, approval of the, of the minutes, minutes up to the like number three. And so if you wanted to do that, you can amend the rules and amend this resolution, uh, amend this uh, resolution to adopt the minutes as amended in that way, or you could just wait. And if you, if there are any other changes, you can adopt an amended set of rules at a later date. Also, if that's easier. Yeah, we could we <laughs> could wait and discuss it unless someone wants to move it forward. Right. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm hearing <clears throat> you say are, are are new information. So is is this something that we we want to? Um, would delete this uh, resolution from tonight, so take no action on it until those other changes come in? I like the, I, I would rather move forward with this set of rules because this set of rules is closer to, in, is more in conformity with how you operate because at the organizational meeting there was a prior version that was adopted. Right, right, right. So I would, if, I would prefer to adopt this as written and if you wanna make any other changes, you can make an amendment and, and adopt a, you know, an amendment to the rules at a later date. That makes sense to me. Any other discussion, thoughts? Okay. Oh, Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouse. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Teglish. Aye. All aye. Purchase of an E35 Bobcat compact excavator. Uh, Mr. Super Supervisor, before I move this forward, I just wanna acknowledge uh, Daniel's comments under public participation and uh, your comments are, are taken um, I, I want to say I think um, Chris, your office received an electric vehicle last year, correct? Yes, we do have a Chevy Bolt. Okay, which I think was our first our first uh, purchase of a of an e vehicle. Yep, and it's working out fine for us. Great, great. Um, so to that point, however, I'm I'm going to move this forward. Um, being that we have the capital equipment replacement schedule in place, um, we're assuming that the equipment that it's replacing is in need of replacement. We don't really know the delivery times um, if we were to change course at this point. So uh, rather than change that schedule, Mr. Tate's not here to find out if what research he has done. I would ask that maybe uh, Mr. Supervisor, you just have that conversation to, yeah. to um, see if he's looking at these options while he's um, proposing these vehicles. But in effort to keep the replacement cycle on schedule, um, I will uh, move resolution 060. Yeah, I'll just, can I add a quick comment? Um, and I appreciate your comments too. I, we had a meeting yesterday and the DPW garage is in, in process of being built and that was one of the questions I asked. Are we able to accommodate future uh, charging, especially for light duty vehicles or heavy duty vehicles? And I was in, mentioned a, a lunch that I was at, very interesting, Wegmans did a great presentation. They've done, spent a lot of money figuring this out, so it's something we're absolutely looking at, which makes sense. Um, and I, I don't wanna talk too long about this topic, but I, what I found interesting is it's, um, there's certainly an environmental impact, but actually there's a real impact for the driver as opposed to running a diesel truck, as opposed to electric, which I found really fascinating. So yeah, more to come on that, but absolutely will follow up. Thank you. Yeah, and I yeah. did also want to comment that I understand that these vehicles, we've been trying to obtain them for some time. Um, and so we we finally found the vehicles, so we need to get moving with it. But I do think we need to look forward and make sure we're looking at um, electric vehicles. And that was actually going to be my question. Does our new DPW facility have charging stations so that we're thinking five, ten years in advance, especially with a brand new facility that we can discuss? Um, not only do electric vehicles um, help the environment, help the people operating around them, they also come back with less cost of maintenance. Um, you know, you eliminate the, that oil, you eliminate the oil changes and, and things like that. So I think for our future of the town, it's a very smart direction. And I do thank Daniel for bringing this up and also your comments um, as well. Yeah, I'll just add too, because you reminded me, and I'm waiting to hear back that presentation I, I watched, I wanna get my hands on it, and I think that we're trying to do that. 
Um, once we have it, we'll share it with the EECC, which makes sense. And I just found it all fascinating and interesting, and the presenters were great. So when I get hands on that, everyone can remind me to make sure I share it with the EECC. I'm looking at Kevin because he'll make sure I get it done. So excuse me, Thank Supervisor, you. Yeah. if you don't mind my interrupting. Yeah, please. Um, the DPW director Eric Tate is actually watching at home on television <laughs> currently and texted me to say that um, he's watching the the meeting as we as we speak and is looking into the possibility of EV fleet vehicles. That's certainly on his uh, radar. So I was going to bring up when these vehicles, and I and I am referring specifically to the trailblazers, but when they asked <clears throat> for approval to purchase these, we did ask the question of whether or not they were going to be adding specifically elect electric vehicles to the fleet, and if it's always at least going to be considered as an option. So I do remember Mr. Tate saying that that is part of the analysis. For some of these very heavy duty construction vehicles like an excavator, because mm. <clears throat> that still goes into the overall percentage of the uh, vehicles for that, uh, or the fleet. I just don't think they make those yet. So I, I did at least want to note, um, again, for very heavy duty um, bobcats, excavators, uh, it's not that the, the town is right. ignoring that as an option, it's just there's no availability yet. Um, but it's still, <clears throat> it's still very much part of the town's forward looking um, and commitment to the sustainability route. <clears throat> Absolutely, and I think it's just a matter of time. You know, it's often said that, well, we can't get them because they don't work right. And I heard that they had plows in New York City that didn't work. Well, they'll figure that out over time. It's just a matter of when. So I appreciate companies like Wegmans spending the money to do all the due diligence that we don't have to, and we can we can lean on them as we go forward. So I, wait, I, thank I'm, you. I'm confused by the Wegmans comment. What, what <laughs> so, are they doing? So for us? I, I was at a presentation, and there was a presenter oh, I see, I at what, Wegmans okay. uh, that okay. talked about their fleet. Okay. And as Linda said, it's amazing what they've saved, but they've tried biodiesel, gas, um, and I'm not the expert uh, on a number of things. So. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if they were now sponsoring something for the town. <laughs> no, what boy, are we name dropping is... here for tonight? Okay, we I got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. No. All right, well, before we forget, I'd like to move the resolution. I think we had discussion before it was on the floor, so I'd like to move uh, before, f I'd like to second, I'm sorry, second the motion before the formal vote. Okay. All set? Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean House? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Taglish? Aye. All aye. Purchase of a T650 T4 Bobcat compact track loader. So moved as written. Second. Roll call vote, please. Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouse. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Hecklish. Aye. All aye. Purchase of a 2024 John Deere 85P excavator. Uh, motionette, again as written. Second. Vote, Here. please. Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouse. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Hecklish. Aye. All aye. Purchase of one 2024 Chevy tra Trailblazer. So moved. Second. Uh, vote. Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouse. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Hecklish. Aye. All aye. Purchase of one 2024 Chevy Trailblazer. So moved. Second. Vote Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Leanhouse. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Teglish. Aye. All aye. Authorization to attend the Groman Rupp factory training. Uh, so moved. Just one comment uh, that I'll just mention. This is an opportunity uh, for Mr. Tate, who's watching at home, uh, our Director of Public Works, and uh, Mr. Fasanella, our Sewer Department Foreman, to attend some factory training. Um, and upon completion of that training, they'll be able to come back and share what they've learned with their respective departments. So again, I'll move that forward. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Barry. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lean House? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Hecklish? Aye. All aye. Town of Penfield's policy book revisions that was withdrawn 24T15. 
I'll move that. Held over. Just held over as, yeah. as old business. Are we voting or? I'll move that forward. I'm sorry, what are we doing? Do I have a second? Go, go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry, I missed, what are we, do, what are what we doing? It? So this is under old business. There, it was uh, 24T015, it was added to the agenda. It's the policy book revisions. Um, I, I thought we were adopting it rather than moving it to, moving it as an addition. So I thought it was already added as an agenda item, or, or uh, I don't remember the exact vote earlier tonight, but it was. No, uh, no, no vote earlier tonight, so. I thought you were gonna, gonna move um, that motion, which it would approve the book. I think we we're gonna move it, and then if, if we wanted to tweak it, we could do that in the future. Yeah, this was a policy book, it was. Um, uh, this is the okay, Penfield is policy book that outlines town policies as it relates to procurement and other procedures. So do you have to, you can just vote on it because it's an old business item. It, I know you struck 32. We, yes, we deleted 32. Okay, so I see, so we're, move, all right. So now we're okay. in old business. So this is a matter of making a motion okay. to adopt the old business item. Is that what's? Uh, that's, yeah, that's where I, I was going. Um, but but in other, whatever mechanics that we add, we are now <laughs> considering resolution 24T-015, Town of Penfield policy book revisions. So I will at least move for it to get on the table. Second. Whereas the town of Penfield periodically reviews and revises certain town policies, and this resolution is to adopt certain changes in the town of Penfield's petty cash policy and the town of Penfield purchasing policy. So as the board recalls, it was uh, tabled from the January 3rd operational meeting as the board had certain questions as to um, uh, the, the changes of uh, requiring or not requiring a, the opening of the bid date to be approved as a resolution by the board, as well as increasing the ceilings for the petty cash uh, threshold for the supervisor. And we just had uh, questions to um, better understand that context, uh, which we've uh, now received. So uh, it would be up for adoption tonight as written. Okay, so I second. Roll call vote, please. Mary? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean House? Aye. Ockenden? Aye. Eckwish? Aye. Aye. That's all I have. So so I, some new business items. Yeah. That we so that talking. concludes the old business. Okay. We have some new business items. Um, resolution 24T066. So moved. De declaring the town of Penfield. Sorry. In intent to serve as lead agency under State Environmental Quali Quality Review Act, CECRA, for the proposed use of Monroe County property for drop, a brush drop-off at 1775 Kennedy Road. So moved. Second. And Mr. Sup Supervisor, I will detail this one uh, a little bit further. Uh, whereas the town of Penfield has the opportunity to consider the use of 1775 Kennedy Road to serve as the future location for brush drop off for the town of Penfield. The owner of the property, the County of Monroe, is amenable to executing an intermunicipal agreement with the town to utilize a portion of the property for brush drop off and make required modifications associated with said use. Whereas based on the proposed size of the town's utilization area plus 6.5 acres or greater than. This action has been determined to be a type one action under uh, Seeker and requires a coordinated review among involved and interested agencies. Whereas the town of Penfield town board wishes to initiate the coordinated review process by declaring its intent to serve as lead agency pursuant to the requirements of Seeker. Now therefore be it resolved, the town board declares it as an intent to serve as lead agency for the purpose of Seeker and direct staff to circulate the required notification to involved and interested agencies. Mary, any, can, can any we, other can comments? We, I'm sorry. Yeah, can we yeah. discuss this just for a bit? Sure. So this is, are we looking at this as a temporary measure that we are still looking at the DPW for once it's built out? 
The way brush, I, pick up. Yeah, the way I understand, I'm not sure if there's a location that's going to work at the DPW site, but it's at least going to take a couple of years at minimum just because that's the build out time, the way I understand it. So I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for. But, yeah. I've, my question is, is yeah. this temporary or is this a long term solution it's, that we're it's, looking at? I think it's temporary. But I think also the my understanding, and again, I think we can certainly verify this. This is addressing the seeker component, not the, the IMA, actual physical location, not the, yes. not the um, intermunicipal agreement that's associated with this um, proposed plan. My understanding, though, is that it's going to be a short-term um, term identified in the I IMA intermunicipal agreement, but that there be provisions for extensions over time, and that would be factored into the agreement. Um, so that would be um, its short-term period of time up front, and I think my understanding is that there's an opportunity to extend it further, and I'm looking to our esteemed town attorney who is um, going to be involved in that review. So, the, so you'll see the intermunicipal agreement okay. before it's signed off. All right. But because Seeker, when it's a type one action, it has this long lead time, because you got to wait at least 30 days to determine who's going to be the lead agency. So we just want to kick that process off okay. so that there isn't any delay. And, the and one correction, we have to wait 30 days unless the, all of right. the involved agencies have provided response right. sooner. In this instance, um, the, the county actually asked the town to serve as lead agency. So we're not taking the reins from anyone. We're, we're picking them up as requested. So I, I think I understand where council person's coming from. Right. I don't think there's a concern of the, the town declaring its intent to, lead, uh, to serve as lead agency under Seeker. I think it's, um, I, I understand that the supervisor and, and many, many folks uh, within the town have been looking for a temporary, long-term and more per various, I'm saying temporary, long-term and permanent solutions for the elimination of the brush drop-off service as a result of the uh, DPW garage project. So I think we're asking um, for this property, is this going to be the replacement location or is it one of other options being considered? So I think if it's, if it's okay, supervisor, I think apart from this resolution tonight, can we ask that it be brought up at a work session so we can just get a status update on the project? And I know you've been doing a lot of work in the background, but if we can just get an idea of what the options are for the town and, and hear about all the, um, all, all, the, all, all the things you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say this. Uh, um, first things first, so we're trying to find a temporary solution and then we're gonna look for a long-term solution. And I just wanna add the county has been great. Adam Bell's office has been fantastic, and they're working with us really hard to get this done. And I think it'll get done. And I think this will be this will solve the 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 brush drop off location at least for two years. And then, but absolutely, we can discuss this at a work session. And we need to find a long term solution, no question. Right, right. Thank you, Councilwoman Lee, for for clarifying that for me and you is, is that, is that fair you. to say like I don't want to nope you are absolutely right okay. I was concerned because the location the Kennedy Road I had to look that up and it's it's pretty far east in Penfield um, and I didn't see anything out there other than just land so I was just curious how this was going to be but I understand what this resolution is and so thank you both that helps I'm good any other thoughts discussion okay Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lee Nelts? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Teglish? Aye. All aye. Uh, resolution 24067, this is also new business, amendment to 2024 adopted budget. So moved as written. Second. Any discussion? Roll call Nelson. vote, please. Barry? Aye. Lee? Aye. Lean House? Aye. Ackenden? Aye. Hecklish? Aye. All aye. Okay. I think this concludes, unless I missed something, tonight's le legislative agenda. Our next town board meeting, legislative meeting, is March 6, 2024. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Before that motion, I'd just yeah. like to note for the record there is no executive session this evening. Move, move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Roll call vote, please. Barry. Aye. Lee. Yes. Lean Houts. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Teglish. Yes. Aye.
I call this meeting adjourned. Who's got the good clock? I'll, I'll say uh, seven. I have 38. 38, it is. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.